Oh, that's right, but I mean, J.J. McCarthy's a first-round quarterback. We know that. I mean, again, he's one of those where you just go, okay, he was in Michigan. It was an unfriendly quarterback offense. It wasn't about throwing the football, but, you know, don't get it messed up like we talk about all the time. You put him on some other college offenses, and it would look a lot different. He can make every throw. He's got the pedigree. He's got, you know, the way – uh, that you want a quarterback to be as far as a leader, kind of humble, not looking to be a distraction, any of that. The arm is very strong, right? It's up there with the strongest arms in the draft. Uh, in fact, I would say Caleb Williams is the only guy that I would sit here for sure and go, yes, his arm's stronger than J.J. McCarthy's. When you break down everything the Vikings have done this offseason from letting Kirk Cousins go to adding new weapons offensively and a guy in Aaron Jones and even bringing a guy like Trent Sherfield alongside Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, and TJ Hawkinson as well, you look at what they need to add next and they're in the perfect position to do so a quarterback right in this year's nfl draft they hold two first round picks because they made a trade a couple of weeks ago um which ensures them the opportunity to open up a bunch of doors right and the vikings are slowly starting to you know set up the absolute perfect nfl draft strategy now, in this video, we're going to break down everything you need to know about the upcoming draft for the Minnesota Vikings, their blueprint, what they could potentially do, maybe what they won't do, but also how this opened up, opens up so many different doors, avenues, directions that the Vikings could go in just because they traded up and now have two first round picks. I mean, man, you could start seeing them make some really good moves starting at the quarterback position. Now, before we get into the video, comment down below, what is the dream scenario for Vikings fans? Do you want a JJ McCarthy? Do you want a, a Drake May? Do you want a Michael Penix, a Bo Nix, right? Do you want to keep those two first round picks? Let me know your perfect dream scenario for the upcoming draft. And with that being said, let's dive right into the video. Now, the offseason really began once the Vikings acquired this second first-round pick. And as you see on the screen here, they got the number 23 overall pick and a seventh-round pick from the Texans and sent out two seconds and a sixth. Now, this trade is massive in itself for one reason, right? They have the ability to open up massive avenues, massive doors in different directions that they could possibly go in, right? First possibility, first scenario, they trade up for J.J. McCarthy, who is most likely going to go at number six to the Giants. But if they trade above them at three, four, or five, right, it could be a possibility. A, a team like the Chargers, who are sitting right above the Giants, are looking to st stockpile picks, right? The Vikings could easily go in and swoop up J.J. McCarthy before he is taken at number six. Or they could take their two first round picks and draft two day one starters going forward or they could trade back and continue to stockpile picks for not only this season, but next season and the future to come, right? So there's so many different possibilities, but right away I look at this and I think that they should go in one direction. Let's talk about it. What amazing. Uh, Coach O'Connell led the whole thing and just being able to see him in person, he was a lot taller than I thought. Um, and, you know, Coach McCown and um, just, Everything about what they were talking about, everything about what they wanted out of a quarterback is something that with, aligns with what I want. And just being able to you know, get on the board with them, have them go through their plays, uh, it was something really special and I enjoyed it. Now, real quickly, guys, before we jump right back into the video and break down more JJ McCarthy film, pro day, everything you need to know, make sure you guys do me a favor, hit the like button. Let's see if we can get this video up to 300 likes. If we do, I will post nonstop Vikings videos for the rest of the offseason leading up to the draft, um, continuing with free agency, training camp, mini camp, mandatory, and everything. Every single thing you need to know, I got you guys covered. So join the family, subscribe if you're new, it's free, doesn't cost anything. And with that being said, let's jump right back into the video. Now, in my opinion, if the Vikings have a shot to go up and trade up for JJ McCarthy, I think they should do it. JJ McCarthy has absolutely blown away almost every single scout from his interviews to his pro day. I mean, the man looks really good, right? We're going to break down some film here in a second on why some of the throws he's, he makes are insane, but also the leadership on and off the field is something you don't see out of quarterbacks too often coming into the NFL draft. It's something they learn, develop four or five years into their career. 
but it seems like JJ McCarthy already has it, right? I mean, you look at his stats at Michigan, wasn't flashy at all, but he made every throw they needed him to make, right? He was also a guy who doesn't have a big ego at all. He would do whatever it takes to win football games and doesn't care about throwing for 3,000 yards, right? He doesn't care about throwing for 25 touchdowns. He doesn't need to do that or he doesn't you know, want to do that if that's not what he needs to do, right? Whatever the coaches tell him, he's going to do. Whatever helps them win games, he's going to do, which is what makes him a very good quarterback and someone you want leading your team, right? But another thing you like about this Vikings team and that makes you think, wow, this would be a perfect fit. You have the best wide receiver in the NFL. Right away, you talk about having guys who you trust. You Justin Jefferson, that is your number one option. And then you have Jordan Addison, two young guys who are continuing to develop, continue to get better and look like, you know, probably the youngest but best receiver core in the NFL. And that's not it. You have TJ Hawkinson, right? Absolutely dog at tight end position. You have Josh Oliver, a field stretcher. You have, you know, Aaron Jones, who they brought in on a one-year deal, who I like, a good running back can do it all, can be your dump down, can be your guy, your safety net, right? I think JJ McCarthy here in Minnesota would be a perfect fit offensively. I mean, let's just take a look at what they built this offseason, and then we're going to get into some film. Now, the first thing we're going to notice here while looking at the depth chart is the main issue right now is just the quarterback position. You have Sam Darnold, but listen, Sam Darnold is not the future of this team. I mean, maybe he has a Geno Smith type of, you know, surge up where he just suddenly becomes a good quarterback, and maybe that is a possibility, right? Uh, but I do think Sam Darnold gives you a little bit of leverage to have a QB competition in the offseason and maybe even allow J.J. McCarthy to sit behind them for four or five weeks before he, you know, ultimately gets the starting job, right? Now, offensively, they have what it takes to weapons, the receivers, the running backs, the tight ends, they have everything you need, especially for a young quarterback to succeed, right? But then you look at defensively, right? They've made some really big moves. Um, obviously, once they let go of Daniel Hunter, they need to get uh, some upgrades, right? You bring in Jonathan Yard coming off a career season and get him for cheaper, right? You bring in Blake Cashman coming off a career season from Minnesota absolute perfect fit. Andrew Ginkle, career year last year, coming over here to Minnesota, a perfect fit, right? Now you have a brand new linebacker core, who, right? And you have Ivan Pace, who absolutely broke out as an undrafted free agent last year. I mean, this dude is someone who could be here for a very long time. The linebacker core looks absolutely amazing. Um, you know, the, the front three over here, it looks okay. Jonathan Bullard, Jerry Tillery, Harrison Phillips, Jonah Williams, it looks okay. They definitely need to add some depth in the draft. And this is when we talk about, you know, maybe even they can stack up draft picks and, and bring in some guys here on the front three. But then you look at the secondary, man. Byron Murphy, they acquired from Arizona. You still have Harrison Smith, who I believe took a pay cut. Uh, Cameron Bynum, they like. Caleb Evans, they like. Um, Josh Metellus, right? And then Andrew Booth, the guy who they believe high in. They think he could be a really good player for them. You also have Lewis Seen, right? Shaq Griffin, they brought in as a free agent. This defense is really, really good as well. Uh, Makai Blackman, I mean, the young, the energy, the... Um, the potential of this defense could be really, really high going forward, and I'm just excited to see what they can put on the football field next season. But this is the main position of concern. I feel like everything else is either young, developing, or already set up for greatness, right? Well, you need a quarterback, and you need to take that risk sometimes, even if it means trading two first-round picks to get up to number five and trade uh, or, or get... JJ McCarthy, I think it would be worth it. I mean, take a look at some of his film and then you make the decision. Now, in my eyes, JJ McCarthy could be skying up draft boards, right? I think the Giants, I think that hype is real. That throw over the shoulder, insane for a touchdown here. Um, I mean, I, I just think JJ McCarthy has what it takes to be not only a leader on the field, but off the field as well. I think he makes some insane throws. I mean, the placement of that ball right there, can we just watch this one more time? Play action fake, drop back in the pocket, read react, look at number seven, trying to get back into his zone, butting up on the play fake, and look at while his back is turned, there was an absolute dot. I mean, some of these throws by JJ McCarthy are absolutely insane. This man has only been, I mean, that throw as well, fitting it into a window of two players, right? Uh, obviously, I've heard a lot of feedback on this throw right here because it, it doesn't seem like a good throw, right? You're throwing in the middle of, of a DB in a safety going right in between them but I guess people say that he studied he knew that this safety would turn around here I don't know how he would know that but he did and throws an absolute dot I don't get it but JJ McCarthy has showcased everything you'd want in a quarterback on the field off the field his arm talent his um you know leadership in the locker room, off the field, wherever you want it to be, he has showcased everything. But then in the pro day, he looked even better. 
and like I did briefly mention it, the Giants are locked in on him, right? So that is real. I think it, it could be a smoke screen where they're like, yeah, I hope someone, you know, trades up in front of us and takes JJ McCarthy. Maybe it is a smoke screen and they're trying to force another team like the Vikings to do it. Or, you know, who really knows what's going to happen, right? But at the end of the day, I believe that the hype on JJ McCarthy is starting to become really real, right? After seeing what he did at the pro day, after seeing how he, you know, responded to some comments during the draft combine interview period i thought the, the dude has you know the utmost confidence in himself i feel like he has um no ego i feel like he is excited to just be a part of the journey and really loves the game of football and that's something you want in your football team in your in your locker room a guy who is a leader on and off the field a guy who wants to win football games but also doesn't care how they do it he doesn't care if he's known as the goat he doesn't care if he's even a, a pro bowler he just wants to go out there and win football games and at the end of the day that's something that you need to prioritize on your roster because when you get those guys who have big egos those guys who just care about themselves that's when you start to not win football games and they won't care right so i think jj mccarthy could be the ultimate player the ultimate leader the ultimate locker room guy but at the end of the day he could help this franchise turn around we talked about the offensive weapons. We talked about adding him already with a great offensive, uh, you know, core here. But then you talk about the O line. The O line was not very good last year. They ranked number 20 in sack percentage, uh, number 24 in yards allowed per rush or y yards per rush, uh, number 30 in rushing touchdowns per game, number 29 in rush yards per game. Maybe that's from uh, the lack of having a, a solid running back because Madison just wasn't it, right? Um, but you know. Aaron Jones is an upgrade. He's averaged about five yards per carry through his entirety of his career. So I think that's good. You've got to continue to develop these guys like Christian Darrisaw, uh, you know, Blake Brandell. We don't know what he's going to be like. Uh, Garrett Bradbury, Ed Ingram, Brian O'Neill. So they do have, you know, some hope in some of these guys, but they really need to develop because the most important thing we saw in Carolina, you got to protect your quarterback. And if you can't, especially if he's a rookie, it could could be dangerous to see their development if you're not protecting them. You saw how CJ Stroud was protected, how good he was uh, with the receivers around him. I mean, man, you got to make sure your O-line's good. I think they have a pretty good O-line right now. They need some more developing. But with that being said, if, if the Vikings take JJ McCarthy, it might be the best thing they ever do.